Hey Control Freaks, what's up? In this video today, we'll take a look at the installation process for CliffX Pro and Ableton 11, as well as CliffX Free, which is still available. Um, the process is relatively simple and described well in the manual, but if you are a lazy bastard, just as I am, and you prefer watching a YouTube video over reading a PDF, this video is for you. So let's get going. My name is Schlappe, and let's talk about CliffX Pro. You can buy CliffX Pro at isotonicstudios.com and uh, once you've bought it, it is in your account under downloads. Download the files and um, you get a zip file. When you unpack that, you have two folders, one for Ableton 10 and one for 11. Now, um, the installation for Ableton 11 is manual. So we need to copy a few files to certain folder locations. So this folder, Remote Scripts, needs to go into Ableton's ecosystem. And this ecosystem is located at users, your username, music, Ableton. And there we have a folder called User Library. Sometimes there is already a folder called remote scripts. If so, just copy the subfolders. If not, just take the whole folder and copy it there, drag it over there. Boom. That's how you install CliffX Pro. Pretty easy, right? So let's have a look at Ableton itself because um, we need to activate it. A quick word on control surface scripts. What the heck is a control surface script? Well, it is a piece of software which manages the communication between Ableton and a piece of hardware. Usually it's something like a launch pad, which is integrated and seems to know something about what is happening in life. And this is done by this piece of software. And CliffX Pro is basically a launch pad on steroids without hardware. So if we open up our options for control surfaces, we find um, CliffX Pro. We once opened up, there's a message in the status bar and a red box shows up. Uh, CliffX Pro is already running. There are two other folder locations I want to mention. Uh, first time you launch CliffX Pro, it automatically creates a folder in your home user home folder called native control CliffX Pro. And in this folder, there are a few text files in which you can change global settings for CliffX Pro. And the last thing which comes with CliffX Pro are lessons. And these go um, in your installation folder, factory packs, lessons, and that goes into the Ableton ecosystem folder uh, under factory packs. CliffX Pro. You just drag it in, how to access those lessons. You go into Ableton under Help, Help View. Let's maximize that. Scroll down, show all built-in lessons, and then scroll down if you have a bunch of them. And there you have lessons CliffX Pro working with native control CliffX Pro. So that is Ableton 11. Now let's have a look at CliffX 10, a CliffX Pro for Ableton 10 has a installer routine. So you just uh, open that up and it copies the files for you. So let's not do that. Let's have a look at the, the last free version. You can get it on GitHub. I'll post all the links I mentioned down in the description. And now let's talk about the folder location for remote scripts in Ableton 10, because it's different than in Ableton 11. Uh, let's go to applications. It goes into the app itself. So on a Mac, you right click on the app, show package contents, and then it is app resources, MIDI remote scripts. And there you drag in the, the folder. It's already there because I 
already installed that. And then it's basically the same activate in uh, Ableton 10 under control surface. Um, you have an entry for CliffX and you're good to go. So what I forgot to mention earlier, CliffX Pro wants to live in the first slot. That can cause uh, some problems if it's not in the first slot. I've never had any issues, but CliffX Pro was always my number one. So yeah, that's basically it. Thank you for watching, stay in control and see you in the next bit.